name is Dennis Vangelstorp, and I'm very glad to be here on behalf of the Be Informed Partnership. And today's blog, we're going to be talking about Varroa mite control. There's no question that the number one enemy to the beekeeper are Varroa mites. These are large parasitic mites. I mean, if we were a bee, it'd be like a dinner plate feeding on us. And these mites pass on viruses, and they cause the demise of colonies in lots of different ways. And so it's pretty important that you control it. And that's why these numbers are really surprising to me, because fully 6 to 59% of the beekeepers who responded to this survey did not use a known varroa mite control product in their hive in the last 12 months. I, want to, I don't know if we can emphasize this anymore. Every beekeeper needs a varroa mite control strategy. You have mites, so if you want to keep bees alive for the winter, you have to have a way of controlling it. And I think this is one of the most consistent results over any, all our survey questions is this one here. The people who did not control varroa mites lose a lot more colonies than those who, don't, who do control varroa mite. You must have a varroa mite control strategy if you want colonies to survive over the winter. And not all products are the same. And some products, have, it appears, to have stopped working. Some of the good news is there are products that work. So we have Apigard and Apolite Var, which are thymol-based or essential oil-based products. And you can see here that the beekeepers who use those products lost a lot fewer colonies than those who used an alternative product or nothing at all. Amitraz, which is a, which is a synthetic compound that just became legal to use two years ago, very good effective control, it seems, as people who use that lost a lot fewer colonies than those who use something else. And then formic acid which is a, a fumigant, it's a pad that you can put on the hive and it, it fumigates the hive. Again, a lot of pe people who use that lost fewer colonies than those who use nothing at all or another alternative product. I do want to emphasize that Apigard, Apolife Var, and Formic Acid are all fumigants, so you fume the colony. So if you have screen bottom boards or anything in your colony, you have to block them off if you want these products to work. You also have to be really careful at looking at the label because they're very temperature dependent and you only want to apply these during the right temperature regime. Fortunately, a lot of the products that we've relied on for varroa mite control for a long time seem to have stopped to work. This is true for Kumaphos, which is check mite, and Flavalinate, which is apistan. People who use these products lost just as many colonies as those who use nothing at all or used an alternative mite control product. Hop oil-based products, I will say that in our survey, you can see the people who use this, in fact, lost more colonies than those who used no varroa mite control product at all. Um, that's a tricky, tricky result to explain. I will say that they're reformulating the hop guard oil, so maybe it will get improved with the hop oil, the hop guard oil. Right while no evidence that this product increases survivorship. Sucrocide is a special solution of sugar that you can spray on individual bees. No evidence that this product has increases survivorship. Another varroa mite control strategy would be using drone brood removal. And the idea here is that drone brood is a very attractive breeding ground for mites. And so drone brood comes into those cells and they reproduce in those cells. And we can use then frames of drone brood to introduce into colonies and then remove them once those drone brood got capped and then put them in the freezer and kill all the mites and the drones and just do that system over time. What you can see here is that the people who use this technique tended to lose fewer colonies than those who did not. Um, however, I do want to emphasize that a very consistent finding in all our product use is that this effect, this drone brood effect, really becomes very clear when you use it on all your colonies, not just half of your apiary, um, but rather your entire operation. And so if you're gonna use drone brood removal, you have to use it on all your operation. You can't just do it on some if you wanna have increased survivorship. This is, this is an important point to make because what we think is happening is if you're not doing it uniformly, if there are colonies that have high mite levels, there's so much drift between your colonies that we think mite loads get spread out in your apiary. So if you're only treating, treating a couple, you're not getting the effect you want. You want to treat everything the same within your apiary. If we look at, at region, you can see that both in the northern states and in the southern states, 
drone brood removal seem to have a positive effect on survivorship, presumably because it lowered varroa mite levels. Screen bottom boards. So screen bottom boards were developed. Um, they're, they're at the bottom of the hive, so instead of a solid bottom board, you have a screen bottom board. And this means that if there are any mites that fall down, either after treatment or just in their normal life history, that they fall out of the hive. Otherwise, they fall on the bottom board, and bees can pass by, and they can jump back on their bees. So we know from some studies that this does reduce mite loads, but from, from you can see from these results, we saw no evidence of increased survivorship if you did or did not use a screen bottom board. And there may be other advantages to screen bottom board. You may be, be increasing honey production. And it is possible that screen bottom boards in combination with some, um, some other rural mite control products may have a real added synergistic effect. But we have to wait for that multifactorial analysis to pull that information out. Um, again, this screen bottom board effect you can see did not seem to, to matter by region. So both in the northern states and southern states, Basically, people who used this did not lose more or fewer hives than those who did not. Small cell size. Small cell size is one of those, um, you can buy comb that has a worker cell size that's slightly smaller than the one that's commercially available generally. Uh, there are some people who believe that the smaller cell size somehow inhibits the ability of varroa mites to reproduce. Uh, for three years in a row, the consistent result is there's no difference between people who use small cell size and those who don't. Also, there's not a lot of literature to support the idea that small cell size has a positive effect. Again, you can see that this, this non-effect is found throughout the regions um, uh, in the country. The information is for educational purposes only. References to commercial products or trade names do not imply endorsement by the Bee Informed Partnership or its members. The results presented here are the summary of the population who responded. The sample may not be representative of the beekeeping population at large. These results simply highlight differences in the sample population. The results cannot be considered conclusive, causative, protective, or a test to product efficacy or lack of efficacy.